Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to continue our Animal Draw app. In the previous video, we designed how to actually make this an MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to code it that way when we do certain functions and events, our app will actually work. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is do some pretty basic stuff. We want to program our home button. So whenever someone presses home, we want them to go back to the home screen. So here I'm going to go to my image, IMG home. I'm going to pull out the event block, which are brown in the app inventor and click. Let's go back and check. Make sure your image home, make sure that you have this selected. If you don't have clickable worked, when you put any code you put in here will not work unless you have clickable selected. So what do I want to do? I want to go back to our screen one. But I also want to do that exact same thing for when someone presses the back button, which is right here. Now we've done this before. We've done this in our animal record screen and our animal sound screen. So again, remember there's a principle in computer science called DRY. DRY stands for do not repeat yourself. We're repeating ourselves again. So let's actually just go copy what we did on our animal record screen and bring it over here. And that's going to show you how to use this backpack. Yes, you're able to copy code in, in, inside of MIT App Inventor. And this backpack is the way for you to copy code that you're going to reuse in between screens. So let's go to Animal Record. And you can see at the top, we have here Image Home, when back is pressed, and we have this Go Home function that we made. So you can see both of these are calling Go Home. Well, I want to have Go Home on all of my screens, this same block of code. So what I'm gonna do is just right click and I can do add to backpack or I can drop it, in, drop it in the backpack like that. Now, if I click on the backpack, I can go on other screens and pull this out. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna call go home, go home. So I could actually add this in as well. Right click, let's do add to backpack. Now, let's go back to our animal draw. So, if I click on the backpack, I can bring out Go Home, and I can, inside of Animal Draw, click on Procedures, and pull in that. Now, if I come here, this is gonna give me an error, but I wanna show you errors. I just pulled out Image Home, and it's giving me an error. And I had this previous image home, and it's giving me an error. Well, whenever you see an X, you can see right here, this, are, this is your warnings and your errors. I have two errors. If I click on it, there's a duplicate event for this component. So whenever apps handle events, there's only one handler for that event. So I can't have two image clicks because the computer wouldn't know which one to choose. You only can have one. So the reason I have an error is because I have two IMG homes. The easy way to get rid of it is to simply delete it. I can right click and delete, or, and you can see that goes away. So let me just show you if I delete both of these, and I did not have an IMG home, I can go to my backpack and simply pull out that. So there we go, really easy. We just learned how to use the backpack to duplicate similar code that we want to use. So now let's deal with, let's go top down. Let's deal with the camera and the image picker. Reset we're gonna do last because we need to focus on drawing and then we'll kind of go down and do colors and those type of things. So for the camera, this is just an image. So I'm gonna pull in my click. And what do I really wanna do when someone touches this, this image? Well, I wanna launch my camera Every phone or tablet that has a camera will have a default camera program. It'll take a picture, and then we want that picture to be returned to our Animal Park app. 
That's why we added this component, camera, when we were designing this app. So I'm going to click on camera. You can see it only has three blocks. After someone has taken the picture using the camera on the phone, take a picture and it just has the camera block. When someone touches this button, what do we want to do? We want to simply take a picture. Now, after they take a picture, what do we want to do? We want to put it on this canvas. So we haven't talked a lot about the canvas. This is the first time we're using it. Let's just look at this. This is your canvas. It's used to make games. It's also using as a canvas as like an art to draw. So I scroll down, I'm at my canvas. You can see it has a background image property. So if someone takes a picture, what I want to do is update the background image. Now remember, these properties can be accessed in code blocks by looking at the green blocks. Um, you can see some of the other stuff down here, height, width, line width, we're gonna use that and a few. Paint color, we're gonna use that and a few. Um, but for right now, we're focusing on background image. So after someone takes a picture, we wanna update the canvas's background image. So we're gonna go to blocks, and we wanna get after they took a picture. So I'm gonna go back to the camera, and right here is after a picture. And after they take the picture, this little image right here is the picture that they took. So if I click on this, it does nothing. It might minimize the block. You simply mouse over it and you're able to get or set the picture. We want to get the picture. Now, where do we want to put the picture that they took on this canvas? So again, we're going to click on canvas. We're going to scroll down. These are the event, the brown blocks. Canvas has a bunch of procedures or action blocks, purple. And then here are our green blocks. And what I want is my background image. You can see there is background image here. There's a light green one, which is getting the current background image. Right now it's nothing. There is setting the canvas background image too. That's probably a good choice. You also see there here, set canvas background image in base 64. So there's a bunch of different things. I implore you to go explore and see what's the difference between these two. But for now, we're going to actually pull in Canvas Background, and we're gonna update it to that. And that's all it takes to use the camera functionality in MIT App Inventor. So let's just see if it works. Again, I should be doing this on my actual Android device, but let's just show you what happens when you use the emulator. At the end of this, when we're ready to test drawing and stuff, I am going to switch over to my phone so you can actually see the app working in real time. So if I click on this, you can see this is kind of an example of what the picture could be. I took a picture and you can see it is actually working in the emulator. But let's make sure it's working by testing it in our phone. The reason I'm using the emulator is if my phone falls asleep, you'll see the real, the Let View app turn completely black. So I'm using the emulator that way. I don't have to worry about my, keep touching my phone so it falls asleep. But let's actually connect Let's View. So here's my phone and I wanna open up MIT App Inventor. So back over here, I'm going to do Reset connection to get rid of the emulator. I'm going to select the first one, AI Companion. On my phone, I'm going to select Scan. And I'm going to scan that code. And you can see it's connecting. And there you go. Only thing, the only thing we've coded is our camera. So I'm going to click on camera. You can see there is, there is my picture. And if I take a picture, and I click OK, there's the picture. So let's try it again, let's do this. And let's flip it around and use the other camera. Take a picture of the keyboard, click OK. And you can see the keyboard actually works as well. So now I'm gonna switch back to my emulator, that way my phone if it goes to sleep, you won't see a black screen. So I'm going to reset connection. And go emulator. And later on when we're going to fully test our app, I will open up again.
Okay, so here we go. I've reset my emulator. Now it looks a little bit off because if you look here, the reset button is not showing and that's kind of pushed off. So I'm just gonna to go to connect and refresh companion screen. And you can see it fixes that little. So now if I take a picture, works. And now let's look at the photo gallery. So that looks like it's an image or a button, but it's actually an image picker. You can see that's right here, image picker. We click on that. Here are the brown event blocks that go with the image picker. After picking, before picking, got focus, lost focus, touchdown, touch up. You see it has open and then it has a bunch of properties, including one which is selection. Selection is the actual picture that the person selected. So if I mouse over this, you can see path to the file containing the image that was selected. So for this, when someone touches this, let me just show you what happens. It automatically opens the gallery. And then if you pick something, after you pick, this block gets called. So this is the block we're going to need. So I'm going to drag this out and put it here. So again, if I click on this and I pick, let's just say I pick my picture from the gallery, this block is called, but nothing's happening because I did not code anything. We're doing the exact same thing for our canvas. We're going to update the canvas background image. So I'm going to go to canvas. I'm going to go to scroll down to the property blocks. I'm going to pull in background image. Now the difference here, camera after picture has an image. Image picker after picking does not have a image inside of there. Where do we get that from? Well, we're gonna get it from the image picker. So I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to image picker and in the properties, if you look through, you're gonna find this block that I mentioned above, image picker dot selection. If you mouse over it, the path of the file contain the image that was selected. This is the the image that the user selected. I'm gonna select this and connect it. So there you go. So now, again, I know this is my emulator, not my phone, but on my emulator, I have some files downloaded so I can still see that it works. So when I select this, what do I wanna do? What I wanna do is whatever picture I pick, it should show up here. Let's try it. So if I select the tiger, you see the tiger shows up there. If I select my picture of me, it shows up there. If I pick something else, let's just scroll down. Let's see if I select the alligator or if I select this little cartoon image. Again, anything I select using the image picker now works. That's how you're able to select an image and include it or post it inside of your app. So now we have this reset button. What reset is going to do it's going to erase the entire canvas. It's going to get rid of this picture. Um, that way you can start fresh. So let's code this reset. I'm going to go to image reset. I'm going to pull out my clicked. Now, image reset is going to do a bunch of things. First, it's going to erase the background image. Then it's going to erase if somebody colored on it. It's going to do a bunch of stuff. So let's just make a procedure. Remember, you're going to need to make procedures for the create task on your AP computer science principles exam. So let's go to principle. Let's go to pro procedure. I'm going to pull out a procedure and I'm going to call it reset all in here. Right click add comments. Remember, commenting code is always a great thing to do. And this is going to reset, reset everything. Number one, I'm going to erase the canvas picture, which is the background image to none. Number two, I'm gonna to speak to the user. So right now to reset everything, what all we're gonna do is erase the canvas picture, which is setting the background image to none. And then we're gonna to speak to the user. Later on, we're gonna be adding to this procedure to reset all. For example, erasing all of the colors from the canvas and those type of things. So these are two simple steps. I'm gonna to go to canvas. I'm going to go back to background image, which is right here. And what I want to do is set it to nothing. 
So for example, over here, our canvas background image is nothing. So to do that, I'm just going to put a empty text block there. I'm going to click on text. I'm going to scroll to the top. Here's an empty box. I'm going to put it right here. Let's also speak to the user. So I'm going to go to text to speech. I'm going to pull in speak. I'll go back up to text. I'll put in a empty text box and resetting. Let's just make So now let's test this. Obviously, when someone presses image reset, we want to call reset all. So I have to go back to procedures, pull in my reset all. So let's see if I click on this and I set it to a tiger, I click on reset. Resetting. Again, if I go back, I set it to a hyena. Resetting. If I do the same thing with the picture, again, I'm on the emulator, so the picture is not really going to take a picture of me. I'm just going to click. So that works, but again, if I press reset, Resetting. it resets the canvas. So that is, so now we've coded the entire top. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will continue coding our animal draw screen.